What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988 coming at you live. Let's get through the power of the internet. And I got a review code about five days ago from the folks over at Nether Realms and WB Games for Mortal Kombat 11. And I wanted to take a deep dive, a critical look at this game, because I've got to tell you, this game is amazing. I'm really enjoying myself, but there are aspects of this game that are very frustrating. And if you guys have watched my channel, you know I complain about monetization and microtransactions all the time. And this, I think, is a good learning point of why I complain about that. Because this game is an otherwise fantastic game but it is built from the ground up with monetization in mind and it detracts from what could have otherwise been a very good system of itemization and augments and, and, and gear. The towers of time are completely convoluted because you're going to see what I'm talking about. So hopefully this can be a learning point for you because either otherwise I still love this game. I've really enjoyed playing it and I plan to continue to play it. But it doesn't mean I can't be critical. We're always critical of the things we love. So let's take a deep dive in this. And if you like it, let me know in the comments section below or by dropping a like on this video. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this. So when it comes to the basic game, um, I've already done some gameplay here on the channel. I'll link to it uh, so that you can see it. And uh, the actual core combat is really, really good this time. The fatalities are gory and over the top and silly. And uh, the combat itself is really good. And if you buy this game and all you ever do is go to fight and go to local and, and play with the game here, you're never going to notice any of the things I'm talking about. So the core game itself is really good. It's got a very decent roster. Um, there's two characters that are locked from the beginning. The first one is Frost. You can unlock Frost either by paying six bucks or just play through the story mode. And the story mode is actually kind of short at, at about five or six hours is my understanding. I haven't beaten it yet. So that's a character you would never unlock for six bucks. There's also Shao Kahn, which is... a I mean, a series staple, and it's frustrating that he was the pre-order bonus. I would really rather they had done something like Smash Brothers did with the Piranha Plant and had this character be like an early adopter bonus. Like, if you buy the game in the first three months, you get the character for free rather than a pre-order bonus. If you didn't pre-order, uh, you got to spend six bucks to unlock the character. Um, since I got a review code, that doesn't count as a pre-order. So, yep, I have to spend six bucks to unlock this character. And then you're going to see these time crystals. We're going to talk about these time crystals because this is my biggest gripe when it comes to the game. But for now, uh, let's focus on the good. When it comes to different play modes, there's a ridiculous number of play modes. Obviously, there's uh, online fighting. So if you want to pe play battles online, and there's all the classic stuff, the King of the Hill and the tournaments and stuff like that. You can do a, a local tournament. You can do local play. There's even this AI battle stuff, which was in Injustice 2 as well. It's kind of silly, uh, but you put together a team, you fight other people's AI teams, you watch them fight. This is feels very much like a mobile game, and you kind of have to do this because up to five times a day, up to ten times a day, five defending and five attacking, you can get um, augments, which you'll need for the Towers of Time. This is the easiest way to get augments. There's plenty of other ways to get augments as well, but you're going to get like... 10 augments a day, 20 augments a day by doing the AI battles. So you're going you're gonna to want to do that. And then when it comes to the Conquer mode, there's so much here. Obviously, there's the story mode, which is my understanding. I barely started it because I've been focusing on everything else. Um, and and, and there's, a, there's a ton of content here, and you get a ton of rewards for doing it. You've got the classic towers here, and there's a ton of uh, content here as well. You've got you know, one, two, three, four, five, six characters, and each time you play through one of these towers with your uh, one of the different characters in the roster, you're going to see a different ending. And a lot of the endings are really funny. I've only seen about five endings so far. Uh, a lot of people are upset about Jax's ending. I'm not going to spoil anything for you here. I think it's silly to be upset about it. This is a silly, campy game. So, of course, what Jax does when he beats the game is silly and campy. But regardless. So, when it comes to the classic content... There's a lot of stuff here to do. Um, now I am going to complain a little bit now because I'm a little frustrated with the crypt this time. I'm a little frustrated with the Towers of Time. So let's take a look at the customization because I think this is where the game really shines. Um, if you play through Mortal Kombat X, you're going to be familiar with the different ways to play the character. Now you can create your own loadouts. Here's my current Aaron Black loadout. You can choose uh, you know, three different pieces of equipment. And then by playing with those pieces of equipment, you unlock augment slots. And then you can um, put augments in them. These augments are far and, and difficult to find, but they are they're, they're definitely there. I still don't have any augments for this gun. And this is super frustrating to me because I've been playing the game for a good 10, 15 hours. 
You can also re-roll the augment slots as well in the hopes that maybe it will fit one of the augments you have. But it's not like you can just get Aaron Black augments. It's not like you can just get augments for the characters you're maining. You're going to get random augments for all kinds of different characters. And then it might not fit the slots that you have. This mode is overly designed, overly convoluted. It's so frustrating. I know it's designed to keep you coming back and playing, but when you see the Towers of Time, you'll understand you need these augments. And I mean, the augments has some pretty powerful abilities too. This one inflicts an additional 3% damage to airborne foes. This one gives you an additional 9% coins when you're fighting in the game. I don't know. It's an interesting system, but I think I prefer the system in Injustice 2. Then you've got your cosmetics. And look at all these skins. There's really only three or four major differences in the skins, right? And then uh, then there's the colorizations of each. But there's so many skins to unlock. And some are found in the crypt. Some are found in the Towers of Time. Some are found in AI battles. And yes, these can also be purchased outright in the, the cosmetic shop, which is the last thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the time crystals. I'm going to save that for the end of the video because this is the area I'm most frustrated in. But then you've got different cinematics, which you can unlock, and different intros, and different victory poses, and um, then all the fatalities. When it comes to the fatalities and everything else, some of these you need to unlock in the, the, in the crypt. Some of them you need to unlock from uh, playing the game. But when it comes to the actual abilities, this I'm really grateful for. All of the abilities, your character comes loaded with all of the abilities, and then you can build your own loadout not just with equipment, but also with the abilities that you want to play with. And so I've, I've built my perfect Aaron Black, and this is the one that I'm going to level up. And I might change his cosmetics, but otherwise it's all going to be the same. And then you're, uh, you're eventually going to see the AI battles, and where you can use AI in the normal towers as well. And this is where you program, program that in. Kind of like an amiibo from Nintendo. All right, let's move on. So here's the crypt, and if you played Mortal Kombat 9, Mortal Kombat X, you're going to be familiar with this concept. Um, basically you get all of the, the stuff that you got in the game, the coins that you got in the game, and you come into this mode and you explore it. And it's kind of like a miniature RPG kind of, you're interacting with, you know, um, Shang Tsung and exploring this place and, and getting different artifacts and different items and forges. And this is the biggest crypt of any Mortal Kombat game yet. And you unlock these chests and these chests are not cheap or easy to unlock 6,950 gold um, 14,000 gold. Then there's also ones that need 250 of these little hearts. And those hearts you get by completing fatalities in a game, you get one for doing a fatality in a match. So you gotta play like 250 matches to get that many hearts. There's other ways to get them as well. Um, so when it comes to soul gems, soul gems are very few and far between. Um, and you need like 2,000 to complete this bridge to move on to the next section of the crypt. So this will keep you playing the game quite a bit. Now, my biggest problem is not the RPG element or the speed at which you get stuff. It's the fact that just like in Mortal Kombat X, a lot of these chests are filled with garbage, just absolutely garbage. I don't have enough gold right now to actually unlock any chests to show you, but what you tend to get out of these chests is not skins necessarily. You can get skins or intros or finishers or brutalities or or stuff along that lines. And once this is all mapped out, I have a feeling it won't be a very big deal for people to go find the fatalities and stuff that they want um, in the crypt. But as it is right now, it's such a grind because you're getting garbage stuff. You're getting stuff like um, character art and stage art and 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 stuff like, man, I really wish I had 5,000 for that, for, for this. Because uh, these are like rare, you don't see them very frequently and they appear and disappear just like in, in 9. There's so much garbage in the crypt that you don't want. I wish that they had just made it chests that you do want. And again, once this is mapped out, it will take away a lot of the grind. But you've got to go play the game for an hour to come back in here to open five or six chests. And you're not getting what you want from the chests. And then it gets even more complicated than that because now you can reset the chests to get uh, stuff using this this whole time mechanic. So you dump gold to reset chest, to open the chest again, to get more junk that you don't want. It's so frustrating because the crypt is such a cool concept. The crypt is such a cool design. I like the idea 
And I like the idea of gating some of the content through unlockables like this. It's just very poor execution because I don't care about 98% of the stuff that I'm getting. Consumables and all that garbage. When I would rather have augments. Well, I'd rather have stuff that actually helps me with the game. But let's, let's talk about consumables for a second. So here are the Towers of Time. And this is where you're primarily going to use your consumables. And if you played Injustice 2... Um, you're going to be very familiar with this concept where, you know, that you had planets that you would go explore and they are temporary. This one is going to disappear in 65 hours. This one's going to disappear in five hours. This one in one hour. And then there's like uh, character crypts as well or character towers as well. I've unlocked uh, the one for Aaron Black and I'm working my way through these. And there's some pretty good rewards in these. But you got to grind 2,500 gold to unlock that particular character's towers and then you're going to earn at least 2500 back. It's not a big deal. But it's it's frustrating to even see that locked. Um, and then when it comes to these different towers, they are very, very challenging. Uh, the rewards are pretty minor. But there's a chance that you can get character skins. You can get intros. You can get some pretty cool stuff. But let's talk about consumables for a second. Because in order for you to be able to defeat some of these towers, they give you the option to use consumables and i'm going to show you as you pick these up through the crypt as you pick this up by beating towers um you have all these different consumables that have an impact on the gameplay now you can't pay cash for these consumables you have to play the game to get these consumables but here's one that uh, restores 25 percent of your health in the middle of a match uh and then it's on a timer this one grants you temporary armor um some of these are just silly. They're so silly attacks that don't really mean anything. Some of them are really, really game-changing. And apparently there's some that you can get that will affect the entire tower. Um, I haven't found any of those yet, but I presume they're in the game because there's a slot for them. Um, but it, once you see what these challenges are like, you'll understand why you would want these consumables. Because some of these challenges are just absolutely absurd. Sometimes it's... You taking constant chronic damage that you can't block, you can't avoid. Waves coming in from one side of the screen to the other. Uh, electrical grids just electrifying you constantly. Um, if you get too close to a character, they either shock you or burn you. I mean, there's a bunch of uh, just really, really absurd modifiers that you really are going to want to cheat to get around. And I, I call it a cheat, but that's what the consumables feel like to me. They feel like a cheat, you know? Uh, this fight seems pretty easy. I think she's got some sort of toxic aura on her. I don't even know where to see the modifiers. So I, I guess I would have had to see it before I loaded. Which is when you would have made all the decisions anyway. But this this modif this fight doesn't seem that bad. I'm sure I'm going to clear it quickly. I'll be right back. Okay, actually, <laughs> I lost that fight. So this is another chance to show you something else. It's just a bizarre design choice. It might be... It might be about accessibility but then you have these skip fights and i've only gotten these from the crypt i don't think you can pay for them but you can skip uh content in the tower if you want to i don't know why you would want to it should be fun to play them but if you get frustrated with the fight you can use a skip fight token as it is right now you can't pay for these in cash you can only get them from the crypt or from completing a tower but if they started selling these you would literally be paying to bypass content, which I definitely don't understand. But there's an uh, there's another option as well to completely turn this into a mobile game. And I don't know if they did this for accessibility or not. Look at the bottom left-hand corner. You can actually choose to turn on an AI fighter. And so you're going to program your AI fighter, similar to the Amiibos and Smash Brothers. If you want the game to fight itself and you still get the rewards, watch this. I'm literally going to set my controller down and we're going to watch Aaron Black do his best to de defeat the computer. My Aaron Black, as I've modified him, as I've equipped him, as I've set his skills, and have, as I've programmed them for the AI. So there is some skill, there is some gameplay in this, but you're still, just like the AI battles, you're just watching the gameplay itself. I'm surprised they didn't have a, a fast-forward mode to this as well, the same way they did the AI battles. But yep, that's my character. That's my, quote, amiibo doing what I trained it to do, and you still get all of the rewards. I don't know if that's in the name of accessibility. I don't know if that's in the name of frustration. Have I used this mode out of frustration? Yeah, I've done it a couple of times. I did it last night on live stream. I, I don't know. I know some players are going to be upset about that. I'm not particularly upset. In fact, I've used the mode 
And once you try to take on these Tower of Time, you might understand why. Because it's not a matter of getting good. It's not a matter of learning the game. It's a matter of, quite literally, just either using the consumables to get through it or let the AI do it for you. These, I don't know, the Towers of Time, just not as fun as it was in the Injustice 2 system. But now I've swapped sides of the screen to show you everybody's biggest complaint. Um, and there is a premium shop that includes... Several characters that you can purchase, and the combat pack. And the combat pack's like 20, 30 bucks, as well as having uh, Shokan available for six. You can bypass the gate for Frost for spending six bucks there as well. Plus, obviously, the game is 60 bucks. And then you have these time crystals, which you will earn very sparingly throughout the game. You can spend 40 bucks on 5,600 time crystals, or you could play the game for, I would guess, 100 hours to earn that many time crystals. And what do you use Time Crystals for? Purely cosmetic. But here's, right now, featured items. And it's the only way to get these items is when they are featured. You have a skin for Katana, a skin for Scorpion, a skin for Liu Kang, a Brutality. And I do not agree with Brutalities or Fatalities being locked behind this. I really don't. Again, you can found, find this Brutality in the Tower of Time. You can play through the game until you find the tower, until you get lucky, and then beat the tower. Or you can just go ahead and spend five bucks to get that brutality. Now, uh, here's some gear for Johnny Cage, found in the crypt, but you can bypass it by getting it here. And then, of course, the same stuff that was in Mortal Kombat X. The consumables, easy fatality tokens. Currently, no skip fights. You can't pay to skip fights. Currently... If they add that, uh, that's a bridge too far. I get it for easy fatality tokens because they're pretty ignorable. It's pretty easy to ignore them. And you will get those in the crypt anyway. But I really hate that the game is designed to be so grindy that you can either play the game for a thousand hours, which I might. I, I do love this game. It's a fun game. Or you can pull out the credit card to get the skins you want. It's a really frustrating design for a game that's already heavily monetized. But it's so frustrating because I really love this game. I've been playing it for the last four days. But it is a perfect example of microtransactions gone awry. Because the game itself is built to be so convoluted, so complicated, so difficult to get the skins you want, to get the items you want, to get the things you need... That either you're going to spend a thousand hours doing it, or when you see it in the featured item shop, you're going to pull out that credit card, and you're going to get the brutality, the skin you want. And I get it. I understand that. It's, it's entirely cosmetic, uh, with a K. It's entirely cosmetic. You don't need those items to play the game. The base game is still there, and the base game is very, very good. It seems like Ed Boon and his team designed a very, very good game, and then the folks who are publishing this game, the folks over at Warner Brothers, marred it up by forcing them to put this frustrating, convoluted system into the game. And don't get me wrong, I like convoluted, I like complicated, I like having a lot of content in my game. Smash Brothers is a perfect example of a game that has a lot of collectibles, a lot of stuff to do, a lot of alternative modes, the spirit board, the, 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 uh, the story mode, all of that is there, it's all there for one price. And then you have the DLC, and if you want to pay, pay extra for the DLC, you can, but you don't have to with Smash Brothers. I wish they had used the Smash Brothers business model, because this business model takes away from what is otherwise a really, really, really good game. Now, that's just one man's opinion. I don't know. Are you picking up Mortal Kombat 11? Or has there been too many controversies? This is microtransactions controversy the final straw for you. I think you'd be missing out on a really good game otherwise, but then again, you you know, you could always wait for the complete edition, you know, that'll come in a year, the game of the year edition that has all of the DLC and everything else for the $60 price. And I don't think it's a wrong thing to want to do that because as it is right now, the game is great and I, I'm loving playing it. Um, but boy, is it expensive to play. <laughs> It really is. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this in the future. These deeper dives, these more intimate looks at these games. A uh, little bit more gameplay as well. Um, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much. I'll speak with you again soon.